the gospel text of today is taken from the last part of the community discourse of Matthew, which is for 35 verses of chapter 18. Today, we will read from chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. And in today's reading, Jesus tells a parable that is commonly known as the parable of the two debtors. The first debtor is a person who owes his king 10,000 talents. It is an unimaginable figure. It has been calculated to get a perspective about how much 10,000 talents are that the gross income of Herod the Great who was the Herod at the time of the birth of Jesus, the gross income of Herod the Great from all his territories in and around Galilee, annual income was 900 talents, which is the gross income. So of a tetrarch like Herod the Great, who had so many territories, he could only earn 900 talents a year. This person, owes his king 10,000 talents, which means more than 11 years of the gross income of Herod the Great. So it is a figure which is unimaginable. How the man took such a large amount is unknown, except that we can say that the king was generous in giving. That's what we can say about this sum, that the king was so generous and the king had so much that he simply gave trusting that this servant would repay and as sometimes happens you keep on taking more and more and more until it becomes unthinkable unmanageable and this person is brought before the king and he promises to pay how he is going to pay is unimaginable as well so in a way it is a hopeless situation it is a situation in which there seems to be no way out. However, the king is magnanimous. However, the king is generous. However, the king has such a large heart that he forgives the man. And you may ask, but why does he forgive the man? Simply because the king is good. The man the servant has nothing within him, has nothing inherent, whereby the king could see it and forgive, saying that the man has a good heart, or the man has got small children, or the man has a wife, the man has look. Nothing of that enters the king's mind. It is simply the generosity of the king. It is simply the large heartedness of the king which makes him reach out to the man and forgive him the debt. He doesn't even tell the man that he has to pay later. He doesn't tell the man that he is going to hold it against him. He simply lets him go free. The second debtor is a debtor of the first debtor. And as soon as the first debtor who was forgiven goes out, he sees the one who owes him money and the money owed when compared with 10,000 talents is a measly 200 denarii. 200 denarii by itself was a large sum of money around close to seven months wages. So it is a large sum of money in itself but nothing when compared with 10,000. And the first thing he does when he sees the one who owes him, he goes and throttles him, asking him to pay. Which means very clearly that the forgiveness that he received from the king has not entered his mind. That the selfishness which is at the root of so many of us has come to the fore. And he will not let his fellow debtor go. He will not forgive his fellow servant. 
And in his anger, he throws his fellow servant in jail, even though the fellow servant makes the same request of him that he made of the king. This man is unable to respond like the king responded. And the reason why he cannot respond like the king responded is because the forgiveness of the king had not percolated, had not gone down to his heart. When the fellow servants look around and they see that the first debtor has thrown his fellow servant who owed him money in prison, they complain to the king. And the king then, because the man has not received the forgiveness, is unable to forgive him. The king's forgiveness is free. The king's forgiveness is magnanimous. The king's forgiveness is generous. However, if the person who has been forgiven does not want to be forgiven, even the king cannot forgive. Jesus asks us about our own relation first with God and about our relation with others. In this parable, we can regard ourselves as the first debtor. And as the first debtor, we come before this gracious God. We come before this generous God. We come before this magnanimous God and we seek pardon because all we can do is seek pardon and mercy from the Lord. And honestly, there is no need to seek pardon and mercy. What is the need is, the need is to receive that pardon and mercy. The pardon and mercy of the Lord is overflowing like a stream. It is overflowing like waters of the river and there is no seizing. So in a sense, what we need to ask that the Lord open our hearts to receive it because the Lord is constantly giving us his mercy. The Lord is constantly giving us his pardon. We have only to receive it. And if we receive that mercy and pardon of the Lord. Then when we look at those who we think have hurt us, whom we think have offended us, whom we think have lied to us, whom we think have been rude with us, then we can look at them as our Lord looks at us. However, if for whatever reason I block my heart and I close my mind to receiving the Lord's forgiveness, because the forgiveness does not percolate my heart like it did in the case of the first debtor, I am unable to forgive. And if I am unable to forgive, then the Lord will realize that I am one of those, like the first debtor, who has to keep that unforgiveness in my heart. Any doctor worth his or her salt will tell you today, that many, if not all, of our ailments are what we call psychosomatic. And this word psychosomatic comes from two Greek words, psyche and soma. Psyche is the mind or what goes on within my heart, the inner person, and soma is the body. So when my mind is filled with thoughts like revenge and anger and unforgiveness and envy and jealousy and resentment and hate and bitterness, then automatically it will reveal itself on my body. And so therefore, we need to ask God for this grace of openness so that we might receive, we might assimilate and we might keep his love deep down in our hearts so that we can then share this love, this forgiveness, and this mercy with others. Will you forgive those whom you think have hurt you, like the Lord has forgiven you?